Yuan, I'm Huan Tzu, representing Great Wall Construction Holding Groups. Great Wall, oh, sorry. Uh, Great Wall Construction Holding Groups was established in 1998 and headquartered in Wuhan, where is the capital of Hubei province in China. And on 1st of January 2018, our total GFA of real estate development um, more than 4 million square meter and total wholly owned real estate assets at 500,000 square meter. And we expertise in large scale mixed use developments, offices, retail spaces, and also residential complexes. Uh, as shown, Wuhan is the most popular city in central China. It is located on the banks of Yangtze River, which is the second largest river in the world. And today, Wuhan is recognized as the political, economic, cultural center of central China. This is actually the night view of Wuhan city and the place where our company is based and where the most prosperous present and future is to take place. There are also many commercial and cultural activity spaces in the city. For example, uh, outdoor cinemas, shopping pedestrian street, and restaurant areas, and also public performances. And yet, most of them are diversely located in the city. Great Wall Construction has established a solid foundation in Wuhan as a proven track record in developing innovative and high quality real estate developments. And all of our projects are situated in prime locations within the city. Um, Great Wall Complex is one of the, our projects. It's actually the masterpiece of Great Wall Construction Holding Group. Our vision is to develop Great Wall Complex as an exemplary development in Wuhan. And we aim to build a high-end customized workplace and retail that features rich design of spaces and to provide a vibrant public realm. We also apply the concept of ecological design into every aspect of the project. So uh, to create, create a high performance and sustainable building. Great Wall Complex is the first development certified LEED, Platinum, Coal and Shell in Wuhan and 15th in mainland China and 48th in Asia. There are few key factors we took from the LEED certification review report. Uh, firstly, it allows public transportation access that increased the frequency of rides to 450 times per day. And there are 100% there are of on-site parking spaces have been located underground, although 48% potable water reduction. And the green cleaning policy has de developed a comprehensive and uh, a uh, quantitative green cleaning program of the project. Besides, there are more major credits awarded. Firstly, it's the project protected at least 50% of the project site, excluding the building footprint using adaptive vegetation, and uh, has maximized open space using by 36.7%. And also, the energy cost saving annually is 29.6%. And 30.2% of the total building materials uh, content has been manufactured using recycled materials. The project also diverted 76.3% of on-site generated construction waste from landfill. Great Wall Complex, as mentioned, is strategically, strategically located in the core of Wuhan, which designated by government as the Central China Financial District. And we aim to provide a destination public space for both our tenants and, pub and surrounding residents through architecture form, uh, public performances and exhibition and so on. And for Public access, as mentioned, the building is situated along Metro Lines 2 and 4, collecting 
uh, three major towns of Wuhan city and also airports and high-speed rails. In terms of management, we are 100% leasing property, which is operated by CBRE to ensure high standard of real estate management. And one way that we are approaching this workplace, uh, work, workplace trend is by providing premier completed amenities and services, which includes retail, food beverage, landscape sunken plaza, multimedia, roof garden, exhibitions and performance spaces, um, and so on. And by now, we are very delighted to be working with some of the world's largest organizations and also top tier national firms as shown. And here is actually the construction process of Great Wall Complex, which took us five years from 2012 to 2017 to eventually provide our tenants and the public an inspiring, technology-driven, hospitality-infused, and sustainable workplace and public space. And up to now, we are very, very proud that our project has gained international recognition. Uh, now, Nick will take us to the uh, construction design perspective of the project. Nick. Thank you, Juan. Uh, my name is Nick Cordingly. Uh, I'm a design partner with uh, Ten Design. Uh, we founded Ten Partners in 2010, uh, about 170 architects around the world. Uh, the design work for this project was done in our Shanghai studio. So uh, a little bit more about the design evolution of the project. Uh, the image on the screen shows a little bit more of the surrounding context and the urban grain of this uh, newly designated financial core of Wuhan. Uh, the site to the west of Zhongbei Road running north-south uh, linked to a main interchange plaza uh, there are a number of evolving developments along this main road in Wuhan uh, by leading developers, uh, Wanda Group, uh, the Poly Group, um, as this uh, district continues to evolve. Okay. Um, a drawing here that shows some of that uh, urban context in a little bit more detail. You can see many different scales of development over time. Uh, more traditional south-facing residential uh, around the immediate site. Uh, more distinguished point towers as we move north, and then the larger parcelization of the land, which is more recent, uh, which is being defined by an urban edge uh, with, around that new uh, district. Uh, an image of the building development on the right-hand side. The towers have been kept very simple uh, in discussion with the, the government and the city planners. Uh, and the opportunity that we saw as designers was actually in the podium. Uh, how do these two towers begin to come down and interact with the streetscape? How can we create something uh, unique that begins to engage with that streetscape? Okay. Uh, an image of the site just before construction. Uh, the site area is around 20,000 square meters. That's looking uh, south uh, down Zhongbei Road. Uh, simple diagram showing the GFA distribution. So we had to accommodate around 120,000 square meters on the site, 90,000 square meters between two towers, and around 20,000 square meters in the podium. Okay, so the client's vision was very much for a new uh, iconic destination within this financial core, uh, a range of flexible office space which would attract a range of uh, tenants. But they understood very early on the importance of uh, a high lead certification which would enable them to uh, attract Fortune 500 companies, uh, both national and international. Um, so they saw that very much as one of the founding uh, principles of their design. But they also understood the importance of an evolving lifestyle, the, the working community which would, uh, would help them attract the tenants that they wanted. Um, creating internal and external social spaces that the working community could interact and engage with the, the public uh, and engage with that evolving streetscape. Um, we at uh, Ten Design, we, over a short period of time, explored a number of options of how to best optimize and utilize the site, ranging from uh, a single tower on the site and distributing a lot of the office space at the lower level. That would be the first row. Second row was to work with uh, two towers to distribute the GFA. 
and then the third one, uh, a, a mix of the two. And it was through that dialogue that we were able to identify the opportunities of the site and how, how we could work with the client to realize their vision. We tested a number of massing opportunities. Uh, as I said, uh, low-rise distribution of office, single tower. Um, but we felt that in discussion with the government planning bureau and the client, that two towers was perhaps the simplest way to proceed. But also the site had heavy restrictions given the surrounding residential developments of the overshadowing uh, to the site. Okay. So through that early dialogue with the client, we uh, had an aspiration to engage with that streetscape and create a new public destination. And we felt the best way to do this was to create a series of interlocking landscape terraces which ascended up the face of the podium. And then we could begin to link those in an open, publicly accessible way uh, and then allow those to interact with the internal planning of the podium as well. So this simple diagram shows that concept of taking the traditional streetscape the urban realm as we, as we understand it, and then trying to allow that to, to permeate and move up through a series of active public spaces on the podium. So a few simple concept sketches of the early days of the, of the project, and that diagram on the right-hand side uh, of the destination leading up to a multimedia garden uh, and external cinema spaces activated at the base of the tower. So as we began to uh, explore this idea with our own landscape architects and the client, we felt it was important to give each of the different spaces its own identity uh, as people uh, move through the development. So starting from B1, the Sunken Plaza allows the developer to have more street frontage uh, to the main space uh, and allows us to start to engage with the public realm from B1 and then sculpting that through a series of interconnected terraces leading to that destination uh, garden at the top of the podium. Okay. Um, to allow and, uh, the public to move between these landscape terraces, uh, we conceived the idea of an interlocking grand stairway. We didn't want anything too complicated and something simple that the public could explore and wander through at their own leisure uh, and led up to the top of the tower. So this is accessible 24 hours of the day. So this was an early rendering um, of how we began to do that. We kept the language of the podium fairly simple, except to express this extension of the urban realm, the streetscape extending up onto the podium and uh, allowing people to explore as they ascend up through the design. This is taken just after the construction was finished, so uh, the podium not tenanted at this, this time. But you can see there the client was very true to the original vision. They didn't uh, try and uh, deviate from that. So this is a simple uh, master plan drawing of the development, the two towers. The larger tower uh, sitting in the southwest uh, corner of the site, around 250 meters, very simple tower. The smaller of the two towers has a side core, which allows the primary views to be enjoyed uh, north and south and east. And then a large amount of landscaping buffer between the heavily trafficked road movement uh, to the east. And you can see the terraces, even though they're fairly narrow at around five or six meters, you can see how those uh, create a stepped edge to the building as we move up. So uh, starting with the basement level, the Sunken Plaza provides, as I said before, more uh, retail frontage for the developer to activate the streetscape. In the center of the building between the two towers, there is a central atrium which allows us to connect all of the uh, spaces together internally. So there's a logical, simple uh, route of circulation in the center of the building. Uh, the Sunken Plaza was landscape designed by us as well. We felt it was important. Wuhan does get very warm in the, in the summer months, so uh, a cooling uh, uh, water feature within that space and tree planting as well to help shade uh, people as they use that F&B and retail spaces at the lower level. Uh, moving up onto the ground floor plan, so you can see at the, between the two towers, the central atrium, which is the main distributor of people as they move up and down through the podium. Uh, the lobby spaces of the two primary towers coming down to the ground floor, and then the large buffer landscape space to the northeast. Okay, so the podium language, the architecture was kept very simple. Uh, we just used a fritted uh, glazed panel, which would allow the developer to evolve the in internal planning of the spaces without affecting uh, the way that the architecture would be read from the exterior. This is also just after construction. Uh, 
uh, had finished and the project was open. Uh, lighting design was very important to the government. Uh, they wanted uh, to improve the streetscape and the public realm, as, and it was very important that this development, being one of the first, would set some of the benchmarks for how the landscape would be controlled and the lighting would be integrated. Um, sorry, let me go back. So the image on the right-hand side shows how uh, we integrated a light uh, fitting into the podium uh, glazing system, which allowed us to express this sculptural form in the streetscape. Okay, so there's an image of that uh, arrival sequence from the main road. You can see this grand staircase defining and uh, inviting people to move up through a sequence of spaces. The first space you move up through is an amphitheater uh, from two F&B terraces and then up to the landscape garden at the top of the building. The central atrium space, we conceive the idea, uh, again, expressing the vertical movement in the same way that the facade does uh, embrace that vertical movement up through a series of landscape terraces. The internal uh, escalator system were, uh, is defined. And you can see here the finished item, uh, the atrium space in the center of the two towers, giving access from B1 all the way up through the office space and the lobbies. And that space is also connected as we plan the building to the external terraces. So in the hotter months uh, and in the cold of winter, people can still access all of the internal F&B and amenity spaces uh, provided uh, for the office working community within. So on this level, you can see there the emerging amphitheater of the, the lower terrace levels, which the client does use and they take a very active um, part in programming the activity and the use of those spaces, uh, coinciding with seasonal events through the 12 months of the year, um, leading to these landscape spaces, internal circulation. Um, art is also a big factor with the client. Uh, the client has been hosting many uh, local uh, and national events uh, on these external terraces. Okay, uh, moving up through the building, the podium also accommodates central uh, bookable facilities for the working community above. Uh, and then moving up to the final destination points that the public can access as they move through these landscape terraces up to a multimedia garden at the top of the building, which is utilized by the general public and is open 24 hours. And there you see a final image of the completed towers, the taller 250 meter structure on the southwest of the site and the smaller 150. You can see there, just through the simple color tones of the way that the streetscape is working, how that streetscape extends onto the podium. Okay, an image of the development in the city context. You can see the sculptural form of the podium at the base and the way that the lighting is used to accentuate that in a very dramatic way. As I say, the towers we saw as being very simple additions to the evolving skyline of Wuhan, and we saw the opportunity in, uh, in the podium through discussions with the client. Uh, simple section drawing which shows how the uh, evolving terraces uh, step their way up from the east of the building, which also helps to break down the scale and mass of the podium. Something else the government were very interested in at the beginning of the process was they did not want another introverted retail mall uh, elevation to the street, and this is something that they want to bring uh, a lot with uh, evolving developers down the street, which I think is a very positive approach to take. Uh, just a little bit more detail of the landscape and how that works. Uh, another section through the sunken plaza and showing how those terraces step up from the street level, creating a more human scale to the way that the building interacts with the street. Okay. Um, as I say, simple fritted glass system. The towers, uh, one of the big wins that the client was able to achieve for the lead platinum was a triple layer hollow laminated uh, low E glass across uh, the two towers, which uh, yields around a 95% reduction uh, in um, radiant uh, heat gain and obviously allowed them to reduce energy consumption dramatically for the tenants and uh, for the overall development. Uh, some simple illustrations uh, of the way that the facade was evolved and the way that we embraced this idea of a, a central grand staircase which invited the public to explore these new landscape terraces. Uh, a dramatic image of the development at night. Um, as I say, two simple towers, central core for the large 250 meter high tower, around a 1700 square meter floor plate, uh, 1200 square meter floor plate for the smaller 150 meter tower. Uh, the development looking south on the left hand side, on the right hand side looking west. Uh, the client's developer has taken the top of the tower as their, uh, as their office, quite rightly, 
um, so they've enjoyed um, the fit out of the top of the tower. Okay, thank you.